Hello? Is that us? That's us. Wow. We're live. Literally. Figuratively. Get that pizza down there, Denny. I didn't hear our little uh, show open. I didn't, but uh, people should know it by now. And if you didn't know, it's a, it's a beautiful... <laughs> well, just win introduce ourselves. What the beautiful Wednesday night. You're Denny. I'm Gerns. It's Sports Talk tonight. We are live. This is the first time we have done a show, this show particularly. Yes. Uh, live on location. We are out at the Fort Missoula, the new Fort Missoula. It's a good refresher, of course, for us because we, we do this at the, the home football games for the Grizzlies. But uh, we haven't done that since last fall, and we won't till this coming fall. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of our mid-season primer, I guess, at Sports Talk for uh, the uh, Sports Talk Tonight show is. It is, and uh, we aren't live from the KGVO studios, but no. uh, we are in Missoula. We are streaming worldwide on News Talk KGVO. KGVO. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't have the notes in front of me, but I know yeah. what it is. Well, you are uh, you know we're AM 1290, FM 98.3, and uh, News Talk KGVO.com. You got it. Exactly. You the, got this. And the reason why we are out here, this is such a, a great deal uh, sponsored by Destination Missoula. Um, it's Celebrity Night in Missoula, and we have with us right here from Destination Missoula, Brittany Jones. Brittany, how are you doing this evening? Good. I'm doing fantastic. Oh, Thanks for coming on the show. She's a pro. She sounds better than She's you. And a, I do she right is now. our first on location live guest ever. Ooh, I'm excited to start the night off. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're excited to have you here. Um, tell us what this is all about. What are we doing out here tonight? Well, Destination Missoula in the Tourism Business Improvement District, they work to bring sporting events to Missoula, and so we have the Com Sports Commission Committee um, that enhance those events to increase the amount that we have. So this event here is bringing awareness, it's bringing funding so that we can do bigger and better things here in Missoula. Um, and Opportunity Bank is our main sponsor, so thank you to Opportunity Bank for sponsoring. I have my home loan, home loan there, by the way. I think I said you, that. Uh, you mentioned that last Shameless day, plug. Can I get a, can I get okay. a discount on my rates? We're going to have Tracy over here, so uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so so we're starting, and, and you can see it now, we're starting to get the the state championships coming back to Missoula. We're starting to see the, yep. the, the tournaments out here, and, and that stuff wasn't happening quite often until you guys came along. Yeah, so we have a sales director who bids on all those events, so... We have state AA soccer coming, we have cross country, we have the uh, boys and girls combined basketball this spring. So, yeah, we're, we're doing good. And we did have a track meet coming here this spring, if not right. for the, uh, track, the surface. Track wasn't, wasn't ready yeah. for the track, yeah. But we did have state uh, softball and tennis, so, and that went well. Awesome, awesome. It's, it's such a great... Uh, it is such a great thing for this town, not only for the kids coming to Missoula, they get to look at the University of Montana, yep. it's exposure for them, the hotels, the restaurants. It's great everybody, for everyone. Everybody benefits yes. here. Some of that's going to be word of mouth too, Brittany. How do you feel about uh, feedback so far? I'm sure you um, you go ahead and, and try to get uh, response from people who visit these uh, events when they come here for tournaments, the moms, mm -hmm. the dads, the grandmas and grandpas and everything. How, how do you feel so far? Are, are you getting they pretty favorable it. They response? They love the facilities, good, especially good now with Fort Missoula Regional Park. We're top notch. And then with uh, the new stadium, you know, Montana Public School Stadium, when that's updated, that's going to be awesome. So Missoula, it's it's up there. Why don't, Brittany, why don't you tell us what's going on specifically here tonight? So Celebrity Night, we bring local celebrities. So we have like Chase Reynolds, Jordan Tripp, Colt Anderson, uh, Zach Wegenman. We Justin Green, we have everyone here. Coaches Bobby Houck, Mick Delaney, Robin Flugrad. Yes. We have a long, long list of celebrities here and they are here to do a free sports clinic and then we have a punk kick pass competition beginning at six thirty. It's ten dollars to participate. And then we have autograph signing by the celebrities at seven thirty. It is one heck of a, it, it's a beautiful night. There's a lot of celebrities here. There's a lot of people out here. Um, if you're looking for something to do this evening, get off uh, get off the couch and get down here exactly. and have some fun. It's beautiful out. Support Missoula, support... Uh, Destination Missoula Sports Commission. How did how did Destination Missoula come to be? Who's, whose we idea? We are the that? official uh, visitor uh, bureau. So Okay. Yeah. All right. I suppose a lot of people just assume that must be the Chamber of Commerce, but there's... How are they different? How are they the same? Uh, the chamber helps local businesses, and we are bringing people into Missoula. So we're kind of focusing outside of Missoula, bringing the right. visitors here and growth to Missoula. Yeah. 
Jim sure. O'Day is heavily involved. How do you feel about that? Are you yeah, give, yeah, are Jim you Jim nervous O'Day. or uh, how much did he pay you to say that? <laughs> a lot. Um, we love Jim O'Day. He does so much for our community. Isn't he an so much. Dude? Oh my I gosh, mean, he's incredible. And this event would not happen without his his connections, his support, uh, leadership. He's been awesome. So. I think when Gerns brought up the, uh, the the state high school tournaments, uh, the MHSA is going to look at that in a try to be as fair and equitable as they can and, and move them around the state. But as far as as far as other events, how do, how do you communicate with prospective old groups, organizations, events that might want to come to Missoula? What's what's the process? Well, we go to trade shows all around the country, yeah. and we meet with you know different groups. So this fall, we have USA Cycling coming for their mountain bike championship, um, and that's something we bid on to bring. And so we're out there trying to promote Missoula, saying this is the best location for your event. Awesome, awesome. Well, Brittany, jo Brittany Jones, you guys are doing so much uh, for Missoula and, and bringing these tournaments in here and these people, and thank you for coming on the show. Thank and, uh, you. Hey, get down here to on till 8.30. Come see some celebrities, get some uh, get some autographs, and uh, and just enjoy a night in Missoula. All right, thanks. Have thank thanks, you, Brittany. Brittany. Good job. Brittany Jones from Destination Missoula. You're listening to Sports Talk tonight with Gerns and Bedard, and, well, look who just showed up. The brand-new father... Oh, he's a new daddy now too, huh? New, wow. New daddy? Yeah, you can put those on if you want to. If you want to feel like a real radio guy, you can. You don't have to. You want to, you want to talk about a busy man. He's, uh, he's running uh, football camps for kids. Uh, he's here doing this tonight. He's got another football camp in Polson. Uh, he's busy getting ready for the season. Uh, Mr. Colt Anderson, former uh, Montana Grizzly, Buffalo Bill. How you doing, Colt? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I lost my voice. Uh, Oh. I had a two-day camp in my in my hometown of Butte, Montana. And well, you're not supposed to yell at the kids like son that. Cam was there tearing it up. <laughs> yeah, Cameron the said kid, you were really mean. The kid got his mom's talent. I tell you that much. <laughs> He's got some. Hey, I was I was strict, wasn't I, buddy? We ran a tight, a tight show there. Oh, yeah. He's just smiling. Sure. He's going, don't, don't talk. Yeah. To, don't get no, me on he's, the radio. He's a, he's a good athlete. That was, it was awesome to he have him. He looks like a good athlete. I watched him out there when you were playing catch, Gerns. Yeah, he's, uh, he definitely got some hands. Yeah. But, uh, Colt, what, how, how's, how's it going? Hey, how, how, Which one? Yeah. You, were, you broke the arm last year, right? Yep. yep. And, and, and missed a, uh, the season. And uh, back with the Bills, got a new coaching, coaching regime. How is that going to be? Yeah, it's going to be good. You know, last year was a disappointment, but uh, – Fortunately, the Bills signed me back this off season, and Congrats. Um, you know I have some I have some familiarity with the uh, coaching staff. Um, Sean McDermott, the, the head coach for the Buffalo Bills now, was my defense coordinator my first year in Philly. So uh, him and I, when he first saw me, he's like, "Holy cow! It's great to have you back." So it's, it's awesome having uh, you know seeing some familiar faces. And, and then uh, you know on top of that, the the defense coordinator Leslie Frazier was my defense coordinator when I was in Minnesota, my my practice squad year. And uh, I mean, I I think I got uh, three different defensive coordinators on that staff right now. <laughs> Juan Castillo, who's the offensive line coach, was my was my uh, defense coordinator as well in Philly, my uh, third year there. So uh, got some great co coaches. One of my best friends who uh, I played with in Philly. His name's Chad Hall. He went to the University of Air Force or the Air Force Academy. I don't know what you call it, but. Uh, He's my best friend. He's now a, re uh, a receivers coach, so that just goes to show you how old I'm getting. <laughs> how do you how do you like Buffalo? I mean, it's a it's a blue collar town up there. How how did they how did they embrace you? And just do you like living up there? Yeah, blue blue collar for sure. It's just like my hometown. Um, you know, they they were big on the the steel back in the heyday, and um, it, it reminds me a lot of Butte, Montana. Uh, you, you know, it's it's not at its peak, but um, I'll tell you what, the people are awesome. Uh, there, there's great food, a lot, a lot of bars, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's just like Butte. Like I said, be, yeah, great, great giant, fan base, a, great people. A giant Butte. But I'm, gl I'm glad Gerns Ger brought that up because I was kind of thinking along the same lines. It seems to me, Colt, that you know, I realize the team has not had as as much success as they would have liked to over the the, the last couple decades of uh, of competition, but they they seem like one of those really, really devoted fan bases that have an awful lot of passion for their team. Yeah, uh, they definitely have a lot of passion. You know, they have a, a fan base called the Bills Mafia. If you're not f uh, familiar with them, I recommend you nope. going online and YouTube and some of their videos. That'll that'll show you how uh, how dedicated and, and passionate they are. But but they're awesome. They they show up uh, Thursday nights, Fridays, just like uh, here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. They they tailgate all weekend. They they stay till Mondays, Tuesdays. 
Um, they have they have a great time. I mean, the bonfires. I mean, we we have, we have practice on Fridays, and when we're leaving practice, they have bonfires. They're cheering us on, and and it's probably the most college-like atmosphere in the NFL. Wow, and, and you know that's awesome. Everybody likes the Bills. It's kind of like the Browns. They're, you know, you want to see them do well. Joe Johnston, Butte Rat, lives in Missoula. He's a diehard Bills fan, and he's uh, he's never given up on them. I tell you what, and he was just ecstatic when you when you signed with him. Um, but hey, you're you're really busy right now. Tell us about these football camps you're running. You had a, one in Butte for the last two days, and you got one coming up in Polson, uh, up top, and uh, and all that stuff. Why don't you tell us about those? Yeah. So uh, I, I guess how the whole idea started is I, I've wanted to do a camp for, I mean, since I got in the NFL. It's kind of what the guys do. They get back to their community, and and so uh, my brother and our other business partner Ross Richardson, along with my wife, we we finally decided to pull the trigger, and and uh, you know one organization foundation that's close near and dear to my heart is the cystic fibrosis foundation my little cousin has cystic fibrosis so you know you, you put the two and two together and, and we say hey let, let's raise as much money as we can for cystic fibrosis and then uh one other one is the big brothers big sisters and uh you know we we wanted you know it's, it's kind of a twofold thing we wanted to give back to our community show the kids a beaut you know give them a, a a positive role show them positive role models and and show them that hard work does pay off now you got one coming up in Polson. Now, did you plan that so you could you could hit the lake at the same time, or, or what's going on? <laughs> what, do you think? what do you think? <laughs> no, I, I mean our, our summers here in Montana are, are, are short, and, and and being in the NFL, I got I got to report July 25th. So, uh, you, you know, just that that was the best two days that that worked out for all of us, and and uh, you know I got some awesome guys there to kind of come up July 6th and 7th with uh, Mark Mariani, Brock Coyle. And uh, Jordan Tripp, they're going to come help me out, and and hopefully I can get a few more guys up there to to really uh, support Western and Northwestern Montana, and hopefully some Missoula guys, some Kalispell guys can come up and and uh, show show us what they got. And you can still sign up for the Polson one, can you not? Yep, yep. So it, uh, we're, we're taking registers online. It's called UptopSkillsCamp.com. Uh, we we open it up from fifth graders on on up. Uh, even in college, guys, you, you want to show us your talents or, wow. or come work on your speed, quickness, and agility. Uh, we, we highly recommend it, and, and all proceeds do go to the Cystic Fibrosis well, Foundation. And, and then on top of that, we, we partnered up there with uh, the Elks Lodge 1695 to, to help with scholar, scholarship and, funds up there. And somewhere in the middle of that age range, I think we got a couple future Grizz coming out of Polson, don't we? Oh, yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, we do. Uh, that, the Wilson kid, uh, who, who's a quarterback, I think he's going to play safety. Right. I actually worked out with him last year, and it, it was awesome just to – to go up there, I, I start. I was just kind of lifting, and then I was doing some speed and agility stuff with the, uh, by myself, and and I saw them kind of just looking, and I, I went to their strength coach. I said, "Do you mind if I take them with me?" <laughs> I said, "I said I, I'd I'd like to kind of show them some things," and and me being a competitive guy, I, I I had them do everything I did, and I was trying to beat them at everything, and uh, you know that's that's how I that's how I uh, work out is as I want to beat the guy next to me, and I, I kind of want to show them what I got, but I want to show them that you know it's possible, so. Excellent. I'm not going to get into the story about uh, back in the day when you were a freshman. <laughs> really? Maybe, that surprises you know me. Maybe I you should. Got, you got Maybe two minutes to kill. That we're surprises at, me. You're letting him off at, the hook. So, at, at, at the U? You know which one I'm talking about? I don't know. I, I've, okay. So uh, my, my ex-wife, her grandmother, Mary Lou, uh, got her hair cut by your sister, sister? maybe. Yep. And oh. so... You know, she, Mary Lou was always asking me questions. You know, who Colt? You know, how's he gonna do? And and you know, blah blah blah. And I go, I go, Mary Lou. I say, you know what? I've told you this story. I told you this story at yeah. Portland State. And I know you weren't the only one. Though. I I said, you know what? I I I think he's a special teams guy, and he might work his way in the starting lineup by the time he's done. You know, I you know he's a, works his butt off. Blah blah blah. I had to come up to Colt his senior year after Portland yeah. State, and I relayed that story. And uh, and that just goes to show you, just just that 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 eye test doesn't say it all. You can't go no. inside and see the size of a guy's heart, and see how hard he's going to work. And lo and behold, here you are in the NFL, you know, five, six, seven years later, and and still doing it. And and I love telling that story because you know I hate being wrong, but it's one of those times when I like being wrong. Yeah. You yeah. know. No, I, I now that you said, I do remember that. And like I say, you you weren't the only one. I mean, there there's people that are really close to me and family and friends that, that, that doubted me as well and uh, you know you know the one guy that really was in my corners here tonight and that's Timmy Houck he uh, he showed he paved you know he paved the way and he he, to, he showed me that it was possible and uh, you know I, I, I saw that he could do it and I believe that I could do it and he told me I could do it and um, you know when you have the confidence and you know in, in the coaches and the coaches have the confidence in you that you, I, I believe anything's possible. 
Well, you've, you've done it and you continue to do it, Colt, and uh, now you're giving back to the community, the town of Butte, state of Montana, University of Montana, and uh, we thank you for coming on, and good luck this year, and we will all be following you, so kick some butt, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, uh, more of this good stuff yeah. out here at the fort. We'll have some more uh, people on. And uh, I think uh, former UM Sports Information Director Dave Guffey's oh. making his way. We're going to flag uh, when former we Grizz head coach When Bobby we Howe. come back on Sports Talk tonight. A reminder from Jerry Wessel's Les Schwab Tire Center. Before you pack up the family and head down the road this summer uh, for a weekend at the lake or a long family vacation, Head to Jerry Wessels in Hamilton for your free pre-trip safety check. They'll visually check your tires, alignment, front-end components, brake component shocks, and battery. Don't risk being stuck on the side of the road instead of relaxing on your summer vacation. See Jerry Wessels Lush Schwab Tire Center in Hamilton, home of the best tire value promise. Bell McCall Company has been serving the Bitterwood Valley as your local Ford dealer for over a hundred years. Right now, take advantage of great savings like savings up to $12,000 on select Ford F-150 Super Cruise after dealer discounts and factory rebates. Save big on a great selection of Super Duty Ford pickups, the Ford Edge, and Ford Explorer. Bell McCall has a great selection and deals that cannot be beat. Find them online at bellmccall.com. Bell McCall Company, located in downtown Hamilton. Tired of trying to remember what pills to take every day? Let Granite Pharmacy help with their free compliance packaging. Granite Pharmacy will put your medications in easy-to-use packets similar to a pill box. The pharmacist will set up your meds by the correct day and time. Instead of opening several bottles, you now just open one packet. Let the friendly staff at Granite Pharmacy save you time, money, and peace of mind. Granite Pharmacy, your locally owned pharmacy on South Avenue. Call them at 926-2940 or find them online at GranitePharmacy.com. At First Montana Bank, we provide things to make your banking easier. With free services like online banking, remote check deposit, and our mobile app, you can bank on your time, not ours. And with our free Centennial checking account, get unlimited cash back just for using your debit card. Yep, get 10 cents back for every swipe or online purchase. Convenience and cash back, only at First Montana Bank, a great community bank. Member FDIC. Now back to Missoula Sports Talk tonight on KGBO. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. We are back. Sports Talk tonight brought to you by Orange Street Food Farm. Right there on Orange Street, great selection. Beer, steaks, all the stuff you need for your camp and weekend. And by Cynics Mountain West Co-op. Your source for Cynics fuel feed clothing and tack. Down on Reserve Street. Ah. Cynics Mountain West Co-op. All right. Danny, what a, what a great uh, couple guests we had This here. is uh, really fun. Destination Missoula's, uh, the, their sports commission, doing their second annual Celebrity Night in Missoula. We are at the new Fort Missoula Regional Park. I mean, as if you and I weren't enough of a draw, Burns. Oh. If, if you haven't been out to this uh, venue yet, yeah, it's just it's very, very impressive. Boy, just, just gorgeous. and uh, Just another man. jewel in the crown oh, of, of gosh, Missoula. You, it's such uh, a wide open area and just, just a beautiful setting. We've got this awesome view where we're sitting. We, we're taking in Mount Sentinel from just a fabulous angle, but the, but the whole uh, layout is just wonderful. It, I'm, and I'm sure we're going to take a jog around the, the, the facility uh, when we're done here, right, yeah. Denny? Oh, yeah, jogging indeed. In, in our flip-flops. Yeah, and, <laughs> and my, my beer. Hey, so. This is Sports Talk Tonight with Gerns and Medard, and we are pleased to have with us once again a familiar voice, maybe not a familiar face on the radio, but uh, definitely a familiar voice, uh, Mr. Dave Guffey, former Sports Information Director for the University of Montana. And you know what? Uh, one of the MCs tonight at this event, and it's, it, it's funny, you do something long enough and they have you back. And, uh, and I heard you uh, introducing uh, a lot of the, the celebrities and former athletes. Boy, it's got to bring back a lot of great memories for you, doesn't it, Guff? Great memories, Gerns, for sure. And, uh, you know, talk about some great ones. Wow, they got them here. I mean, some of the greatest receivers, defensive backs, offensive linemen, linebackers, you know, guys you played with, Wellesley. I mean, yeah. when they showed me the list, I said, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's really, it is really tough in this day and age to get you know, let alone a couple athletes here all at the same time. But there is a, I mean, not only the ones that were living in Missoula, but the ones that have, have come from out of town. It's, it's pretty amazing. There, well, there's like 25 of them, I think. And, 
you know, to get guys like Marty Morningwig here, who's, you know, the offensive coordinator for the Ravens, to get him here. Although he does have a nice little pad here in Missoula he recently built to visit. But, uh, you know, and his daughter Molly goes to the University of Montana. But to see guys that played, you know, back in the 80s and stuff, back in the 90s, it's, it's just a great array of great talent. And we do have that one representative from Grizz Basketball, Brian Qualley, who's played in, in Europe the last six years. He's, he's the tall guy. He's the tall guy, and he's just a great person. Yeah, he's uh, he's having fun uh, introducing and himself and, and reconnecting, you, I'm sure. Yeah, but and you mentioned Marty Morningwig having a home. Uh, Brian is a, is a homeowner here in, in Missoula as well. Yeah, and and uh, these are all these guys that you've you've crunched so many numbers uh, about, and you probably saw some of them, and you go, oh man, I remember when I had to write that article about the time you did this, or or you broke that. I will bet a lot of that is flashing through your head. It, it's all really good memories, Denny. Uh, Especially, you know, guys like like Wellesley because he he was in that championship game. You know, Gerns missed it by a year. Uh, we the, the Montana Grizzlies could have, in my opinion, easily won the national championship in '93, '94. You know, we were right there. Uh, two just brutal losses. I know Gerns hates his stuff, but hey, that's that's two or three teams. This guy's teams could have won a couple chippers too. It's it's a fine line, man. I hate Jim Trestle and I hate Youngstown State. Just let me <laughs> let me tell you that right now. And 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 what's Jim Trestle doing these days? I don't know. He had a couple good years at a big school there for a while. But. Oh yeah, he did. Yes, he did. And uh, well, I tell you what, Bobby Halk here. You got Bobby Halk. You got Robin Flugrad. You got Mick Delaney. I mean. Are you kidding me? It's it's the it's the creme de la creme of uh, of Grizzly coaches. Well, I don't I don't know, Gerns. If, if you heard my intro, Bobby Houck, second most wins in school history with 80. He did that in seven seasons. Don Reed had won 85 for the record. Took him 10 seasons. Bobby averaged 11 and a half wins per season in the playoffs all seven years. Played for three national championships. Fairly successful. <laughs> yeah, and he's uh, and he's parlayed that into uh, some continued coaching. Yep. As, as we'll get into that uh, when when he gets on here. And uh, uh, what are you doing, Guffy? What's going on for the summer? Hey, you know, I'm I'm drinking an adult beverage, doing a radio interview, and I never thought I could say that. <laughs> Got a highlight Highlander here in my hand, and, and back in the old days, the SID days, Gerds, it was water or soda, dude. <laughs> I, I think you <laughs> finally so found dedicated. your calling. Life Guffy. is good, yeah. And uh, well, you're gonna you're gonna be our our full time guest on. Sports talk tonight, a whole hour sometime in the near future, aren't you? We want to. You know, we I love reminisce. working with you we guys. Had, we had fun with you on the football yep. pregame game show. Your where are the now stuff, and uh, we'd like to do some more of that. Yeah, it, this is a, it's going to be a tough act for him to follow, but your yeah. next guest, Bobby Hauk, uh, I miss that dude. He was great to work with. Yeah, all great right. to work with. Well, yeah. well, Guff, hey, thanks for joining us. Get back to your uh, MC and duties, and uh, and catch up with some uh, former friends and, uh, and and colleagues and and what have you. As head coach Don Reed would say. It's good talking to you, number 21. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then he'd say, Guernsey, uh, run the stairs. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, run the stairs, Guernsey. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Guff. We really thanks, appreciate Guff. it. Bobby. Bobby Houck. Bobby. You know, everybody's just, they're just standing in line. They're, they're, they're waiting on bated breath here. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> Gerns, good to see you. Denny, old home week for us. This Welcome is, uh, back. Yeah. yeah wow. Back thanks, to the future thanks for, uh, it's you're, fun. Sti you're still dev a dedicated listener to our hunting and fishing shows. I like that. Yeah, I watched uh, well, you were filling in for the captain on Friday as yes, I was uh, headed out the river, got my, uh, got my report, and thanks to you, I got skunked. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look at, look at that. you got a Wyoming hat on, and i got a Wyoming hat on, too. That? Yeah, Ugly yeah. bug fly we try to We try to lead people astray. We, we set yeah. them down different places, keep them out of our uh, home water up here. Yeah. Well, there's, there's Uncle Tom Houck just walking on by, former head, head coach, former coach for the Montana Grizzlies. Hey, Bobby, you're down at San Diego State now. How is the weather? <laughs> San Diego's pretty good living. Uh, as I like to say, there's no place better than... Uh, Western Montana this time of year, but uh, round the calendar, San Diego's pretty tough to beat, and we're enjoying it. My twins are seniors at San Diego State. Uh, Robbie just graduated from high school wow. down there and signed with NAU, and, and our little one's flourishing, so all is well for the Hawks in San Diego. How did you get down to San Diego State? How, how'd, that, uh, how'd that have? What connection well, did you have down there? Uh, the head coach, Rocky Long's an old and good friend of mine, and, and when we had a a chance to look for a job a couple years ago. I hmm. uh, had a couple of different opportunities, and uh, in fact, he even asked me, he said, are you not going to take one of those other jobs? I said, none of them's in San Diego, man. You're stuck with me if you still want me. So uh, <laughs> down to San Diego we went, and it's been just awesome. Uh, two years there, we've 
kind of bullet everybody in the conference and won a couple championships and it's just a great working environment it's a great place to live we got good people and uh, the football part of it's been spectacular. So, so would you uh, compare San Diego State right now to maybe where Boise was years ago, kind of knocking on the door, trying to? Well, we finished uh, we finished ranked last year's first time in 40 years or something since Don Coriel was the head coach, which you probably aren't even old enough to remember. Air uh, Coriel, Danny, Danny certainly. Oh, is. Air Coriel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, you know, we've we've the last two years have been really, really good, uh, and and it hasn't been close frankly. So we're, we're going to be back to the mix again this year. We lost a lot of guys uh, to graduation this past year. And so we, it kind of reminds me a little bit of 2007 here at Montana where we were really good. And then 2008, we weren't real sure about how it was going to go. And obviously that went the right way. So maybe we can do that at state too. So we'll see. You know, it's, it's funny with football. You never know what you got coming in. You never know who's going to make the, the leaps and bounds. Uh, you know the backup one year and then the all league guy the next. That's a great. That's a great thing about football. You just never really know. It is, and you know we've got a lot of NFL guys out here on the field coaching the kids, and the NFL is a completely different uh, beast in that area. I mean, they draft them, they hire them. You're there uh, in college. You recruit them. You try to project what they're going to be. Right. I mean, not everybody's Alabama or Ohio State where you know what you're getting. Uh, most of it's a projection for us, and it's it's fun to watch guys go from. Uh, you know, when they walk in the door as a true freshman and you're going, I don't know about this guy. And yeah. by the time they're juniors, they're major contributors. And I, I think, you know, just from a personal standpoint, that's that's maybe the most rewarding thing. I think to some of these guys that are out here, I mean, Colt Anderson, uh, Chase Reynolds, guys like that. I mean, nobody thought much of them coming in the door and all of a sudden <laughs> they're the all-time greats. So uh, one of the best things about being a college football coach. How's that? Uh, How's your recruiting base, Bobby? I think a lot of people just assume, well, they're down in California. There's 40-some million people in California. They probably only recruit in California. Obviously, that can't be the, the case at that division of college football, but how do you sell the Aztecs besides the beautiful weather, of course? Yeah. Facilities, fan base, school, what, uh, what's the process? Yeah, you know, facilities, fan base, school. Uh, we actually have a pretty good university to recruit to. There's, over, there's around 90,000 applicants uh, last year to San Diego State, and we only uh, let in 4,900. So it's it's wow. oftentimes it's the second most applied to university in the country behind UCLA. So we've got that. We do branch out of state a little bit. We get into Arizona and Nevada mm -hmm. and Texas a little bit, but most of it's California and most of it's uh, uh, definitely the southwestern part of California. So San Diego's got good high school football and we get our share of those guys. Obviously, uh, the L.A. Basin, Riverside, San Bernardino counties are all, uh, the Valley, are all beastly in terms of the numbers of, sheer numbers of high schools and high school players. And so we, we get a pretty good number from that area. Well, hey, Bobby, well, we want to keep any longer. Get out there, see some people you haven't seen in a while, enjoy the sun, enjoy the night. And uh, thanks for coming on. We wish you uh, and the Aztecs uh, a kick-butt season, man. Well, as always, it's good to be with you two old buddies. And, uh... Uh, you know, it's fun to be here with uh, some of the uh, old and dear friends and be back in town. And this is just a, a, a great deal. I'm glad people are out to see us. So with that, uh, go Grizz, and I'll see you all soon. Thank you, Bobby. Great okay. seeing you, man. Bobby Houck, former head coach of Montana Grizzlies, one of the good guys and one of the best. Okay. When we come back, we're going to have Jordan Tripp on. Oh, very nice. Live from Sports Talk Tonight with Gerns and Bedard. It's project season, and the tool guys at Montana Tool are ready to help. When you shop a tool store, not a tool department, you expect the best products. That includes accessories, and Montana Tool has a complete inventory of American-made bits, high-quality blades, sandpaper, and more. And if you need some expert advice, the tool guys at Montana Tool can provide that too. Tools and parts that are built to last. That's what Montana Tool is built on. Beginners to experts trust Montana Tool, 1908 North Avenue West in Missoula. Summer in Missoula is all about friends, beer, and barbecue. With that said, Orange Street Food Farm has your back. The food farm butchers grind fresh hamburger daily. They can do custom cuts and they make their own brats. Orange Street Food Farm also offers all natural, organic, gluten-free, and local Montana-made foods for your family. And if you're looking for a quick bite, stop by the deli featuring the best fried chicken in town and river meal deals with vacuum-sealed sandwiches to keep your lunch dry for your adventures. Orange Street Food Farm, your community-involved, locally-owned Missoula grocery store. 
When you think of a plumber, what comes to mind is usually an indoor problem with a toilet, sink, or pipes. Now that you're planning to use more outside fixtures, you might find some unexpected nuisances that occurred during the winter months. Indoors or out, Thomas Plumbing has been Western Montana's go-to plumber for decades. Commercial or residential, no job is too small for Thomas Plumbing. And they won't drain your bank account. Thomas Plumbing, 2327 South Avenue West in Missoula. Tired of trying to remember what pills to take every day? Let Granite Pharmacy help with their free compliance packaging. Granite Pharmacy will put your medications in easy-to-use packets similar to a pill box. The pharmacist will set up your meds by the correct day and time. Instead of opening several bottles, you now just open one packet. Let the friendly staff at Granite Pharmacy save you time, money, and peace of mind. Granite Pharmacy, your locally owned pharmacy on South Avenue. Call them at 926-2940 or find them online at GranitePharmacy.com. Sports Talk Tonight, live from the KGBO studio. Missoula Sports. We are back. Sports Talk Tonight, Gerns and Bedard, brought to you by, well, some new ones. First Montana Bank. Oh, they're not new. No. They're always our guest. They're always, yeah. they, they bring you our guests. First Montana Bank, Bell McCall Ford, The Peak Health and Wellness, Granite Pharmacy, Montana Tool, Thomas Plumbing, and Jerry Wessels Tire Center. There we are go. here uh, out at Fort Missoula at Celebrity Night, and uh, it is sunshiny. There are uh, professional athletes here, and I'm sitting by one of my favorites, uh, former, former number 44, former number 37, <laughs> Yeah, uh, Mr. Jordan Tripp of the now Green Bay Packers. Welcome, my friend. How we doing? I'm doing great. Hey, I got a question. I've always wanted to ask you this. I want to know how hard it was for you to switch numbers, because as we know, Gene yeah. was number 44. Yeah. If I remember correct, your father, who I played with, Brian, was number 44. Yeah. You wore number 44. Yeah. I know that number 37 is special. Yeah. That had to have been a tough decision. Probably a good decision, but a tough one. Definitely was. Um, you know, it was tough. I can remember like his uh, yesterday, just talking about it, uh, talking about it with my dad. I didn't really tell him at the time. And then uh, I remember talking to Timmy Houck, uh, the guy who kind of paid the way for all of us doing what we do now. And uh, I got a lot of respect for that guy. And kind of when I heard from him, it just made sense, you know what I mean? Um, Montana football, uh, you know, that is, you know, 37 is, you know, Montana football and everything that you represent with that number, you know, type of person you are, how you carry yourself and what you bring to the team, not only as a player, but as a person. And, you know, uh, you just kind of have to accept those things and one of the best decisions I made. I love it. Uh, and to have the opportunity to wear that number, represent the university and pass that number on was awesome. Well, and you definitely uh, represented it well. and. Uh, in the NFL, is this your third year coming up? Fourth, fourth. year. Fourth year yeah. coming up. And I tell you what, the NFL is very finicky. It's very crazy. Yeah. You've bounced around yeah. quite a bit. I thought I thought for sure you found a, a home in Seattle, which mm -hmm. was which was great for me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but now you're with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. And uh, t tell me kind of when you left the Seahawks and when you got to the Packers, kind of how that transpired and uh, and, and what, what all went on there. Um. You know, it was a great opportunity in Seattle. Got to play um, and um, meet a lot of good guys. Got a lot of good buddies on that team. Um, but going, you know, when I got hurt uh, against Tampa um, in Seattle, and we ended up um, doing a, an injury settlement there and going to Green Bay that next week uh, was probably the best thing that happened to me. Um, I absolutely love Green Bay. It's a better fit for me. Uh, it's a better culture for me. Not that Seattle wasn't, but um, Green Bay and what it entails is just really special. Um, a lot of it has to relate with the way Coach Houck was with us here, doing things right, accepting your role, um, and just taking care of your job. And, you know, Coach McCarthy and uh, Mr. Thompson, our general manager, um, that's the type of culture they want. They want you to be able to show up, take care of business, do your job, um, know your role and responsibility, and do it, and, uh, and do it at a high level. So. To, to have that blue collar mentality there that I was kind of brought up in uh, is a complete blessing and I couldn't be happier where I'm at and uh, with the opportunity that I have there. You know our Montana Grizzly fans are, are rabid borderline psychotic. Um, <laughs> I am I, I, and all NFL fans are crazy but 
Green Bay's got to be. It's I enough. mean, just salt. I mean, this, this kind of where the game came from. Yeah. The frozen tundra. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the fans got to be great. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a lot of history. Like I had said before, um, it's like a bigger version of the University of Montana. Just, just um, the town is blue collar. It's all football. Um, it's all business. Everybody, you know, you want to win, and you know, winning's fun, and uh, that's that, that's what we like to do there. Um, but in order to do that, you got to have a great setup and that's what we do with uh, the type of players on the team and the coaches that we have. Jordan, what are, you, what are some of the things that you think um, in your, your career as a, as a Grizzly have really been beneficial to you as a, as a player in the, in the NFL? What, what did you take from the University of Montana that you've been able to apply in your pro career? Work ethic. Uh, first person I came in, like I said again, was Bobby Houck. Uh, the, he he uh, he went about it a certain way to where you were tested to the point where you wanted to make sure and you knew that you wanted to play football. He found out if you wanted to play football, and if you wanted to play football, you were going to be a guy on his team. Um, but he was going to test you, and he was going to make sure you wanted to. And in order to do that, um, you had to have work ethic. You had to have focus. You had to have commitment. Uh, you had to know your job, and you had to know how to do that job, and you had to do it at a high level. And I think that, that persistence and consistency um, to do that every single day, that focus, to do that every single day, that grit, which Coach McCarthy talks about, to do it every single day is what separates you, what mm -hmm. makes a difference. You know, things aren't always going to go the way you want it to, but in the end, you're going to have more opportunities and you're going to be able to control your destiny by the way you work. You know, um, it might not end up, you know, in, like in my case, like it did, uh, I didn't play my whole, my whole career in Miami, Jacksonville. Seattle, but I sure as hell want to do it in Green Bay, and I'm going to keep going about it that way. Um, you know, it's uh, all those things lead to um, lead to you um, being where you're supposed to be. I, I tell you what, as long as as long as you can, at the end of the day, look at yourself in the mirror and know that you've done everything you can yeah. possibly do, uh, then you, you can't ask for more than that. Let the chips fall where they may. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jordan, uh, you're helping out with the Colt Anderson's Up Top football camps. Uh, you're back here for this event. What's it mean to come back and, uh, and, and give back to the community a little bit? I love it. You know, I was born and raised here. I was just like these little kids out here running around and uh, come do something like this. It's absolutely awesome. I think it's great that Colt and, uh, you know, the Sports Commission and everybody can get these types of things going for kids out here because, uh, you know, I think that's something that a long time ago Missoula didn't really have and we're really picking that up and I think it's great to have kids uh, experience that and for us to you know have a positive impact and maybe share some of the stuff that we've had and you know we learn just as much as they do during these things um, so I think it's awesome and I absolutely love it. I, re I remember going to football camps uh, when I was in high school and I remember uh, Mark Rippon and Paul Scancy and Sean Salisbury and boy they had these these nylon coaching shorts <laughs> Th those weren't very inspirational <laughs> but just being able to uh, to be amongst guys that are there and are doing it at the at the at the utmost level and and uh, and just you guys are all inspirations. Uh, I tell you what, I can't. You, you look at the list of, of Montana guys currently in the NFL, and it's more than like 35 FBS schools yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, and I know that you guys look to you know to. to to Timmy Houck and the guys that have been before you to pave the way, and uh, and you just continue to do that, and the, and the guys that are below you, you know, see what you do, and uh, truly an inspiration, yeah. and uh, and Thank it you. shows you what hard work will do. Absolutely. Are you are you able to keep tabs on the on the current Grizz football team, or are you just oh, a little yeah, too busy? Yeah. No, 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 for sure. Um, definitely, you know, it's it's always got a certain place in my heart. You know, I'm Grizz always, um, so it's good to pop back there. I was actually able to see my first game. Since I've, you know, in the four years I've been playing, um, just just last year, but uh, you know, as as a non-player, come to my game, come to a game, and it's cool, it's fun. I like being around it. You know, interested to see what happens this year. Uh, you know, always wishing the best and hope that they're working hard in the way that they should, so they can take care of business. Well, if they work uh, as hard as you do, Jordy, and that can do what they're doing, they're going to be just fine. Hey, we'll let you go because I know that you want to go back and hang out with Wegenman down there. <laughs> I'm sweating down there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we wish you luck. We wish Green Bay luck, and uh, and uh, hopefully see you this this fall sometime. Absolutely. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan Tripp, former Montana Grizzly, uh, number 37. We're going to take our last break, and when we come back, it looks like we got uh, former head coach Mick Delaney.
It's going to drop by. Yeah. We'll when, find some more, too. Maybe uh, Chase Reynolds over there. When we come yeah. back, Sports Talk tonight. The seasons have changed and the outdoors is calling. It's time for a trip to CHS Mountain West Co-op. We have your lawn fertilizer, lawn and garden seeds, livestock and pet food and supplies, buckets, fencing, gloves, summer t-shirts and shorts, straw hats and your propane for camping, and the backyard barbecues. We have you covered at CHS Mountain West Cooperative in Missoula and Ronan. A reminder from Jerry Wessel's Les Schwab Tire Center. Before you pack up the family and head down the road this summer uh, for a weekend at the lake or a long family vacation, head to Jerry Wessel's in Hamilton for your free pre-trip safety check. They'll visually check your tires, alignment, front-end components, brake components, shocks, and battery. Don't risk being stuck on the side of the road instead of relaxing on your summer vacation. See Jerry Wessel's Les Schwab Tire Center in Hamilton, home of the best tire value promise. Mel McCall Company has been serving the Bitterwood Valley as your local Ford dealer for over 100 years. Right now, take advantage of great savings like savings up to $12,000 on select Ford F-150 Super Cruise after dealer discounts and factory rebates. Save big on a great selection of Super Duty Ford pickups, the Ford Edge, and Ford Explorer. Bell McCall has a great selection and deals that cannot be beat. Find them online at bellmccall.com. Bell McCall Company, located in downtown Hamilton. A lot of people switch to a new bank because they're mad at their old bank. But how do you choose a new bank? They all seem to have free checking, but First Montana Bank's Centennial Checking actually pays you, and it's free. Get 10 cents back every time you use your debit card. It really adds up. Get to know us at firstmontanabank.com and see why First Montana Bank is a great community bank. First Montana Bank, member FDIC. Now back to Missoula's Sports Talk tonight on KGBO. Missoula Sports. Every second of every day. We are back. Sports Talk tonight coming to you live from Fort Missoula. It's Celebrity Night. Destination Missoula. Gerns and Bedard. We're talking to some famous people. and uh, I know. You know, and we this is a first time guest we've had on here. And, and if you would never heard him on the radio, but you've seen him on TV. If you ever watched Hard Knocks on HBO, you know who Chase Reynolds is. And uh, Chase Reynolds, former uh, University of Montana Grizzly, all-time great running back, been in the NFL. How many years now? Six? Uh, going on seven. Going on seven. Uh, a free agent at the moment. He will sign with somebody, I guarantee you that. But how... How was Hard Knocks in that HBO thing last year? That had to have been pretty cool. It was fun. I tell everybody, don't let your kids watch it. It's not, uh, it's not <laughs> yeah, a good it's... part of my life. So. <laughs> Those well, are how football <laughs> coaches actually talk. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, who it, knew? It was fun. It was uh, for them to be there. You know, you're always kind of worried, you know, are they going to be in the way? Are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? And, um, you know, it was a cool opportunity to have them come in and be a part of the show and um, kind of get, get I... people back home to be able to see actually what we do and, um, you know, in the locker room, in the meeting rooms, and stuff like that. You know, I, I had not given that part of thought when you said they come in. How, how big of a staff were you talking about? You had a camera crew. I'm sure you had interviewers and then and, and people taking notes and all of that. But. Yeah, you know, they're 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 pretty scarce. There's, uh, you know, I think there's six or seven of them. That was it. They, you know, they they actually set up cameras in the room, so you you're, you're never um, bothered by them. And you know, if we have a big special or a big team room. Um, usually they're in the back and shoot by the third, fourth day, you forget they're even there. So they, okay. they do a really good job of, of staying out of the way. Now, now is is the MMA in your in your future here? I, you got in a little scruffle there uh, one of those episodes. Oh, uh, yeah, you? you know, I'm always trying to do something. So, uh, you know, if you need me to come throw a few punches, let me know. <laughs> now, you, uh, you came into the NFL practice squad, uh, worked your butt off and, and got on the active roster and, and heck, you're the special teams guy for the for the Rams. I mean, uh, tell me the progression from from. Well, we know where you came from, from yeah. Drummond, University of Montana. How tough has it been these past six years just to get where you're at now? Yeah. So obviously the the toughest years were my first two years. Um, you know, not not knowing what's going on. My first year practice squad, I was on and off, on and off. 
um, off for a month, um, was actually one day from coming home. Told my wife, hey, we're packing up boxes, we're coming home. You know, I've, wow. I've tried to live the dream and, you know, I can help my, hold my head up high and, and be proud. And uh, I got a phone call the next day to, to come back to work. So, you know, that, that part was, was tough, um, the unknowing, you know, we had two kids at the time. Um, and then uh, the next year, Jeff came, and um, I was on practice squad all year long, and um, you know had a good, good solid year, and got strong. And um, it was that next year where I ended up getting on the active roster, and um, you know, kind of from there, was, I've I've been active since. So it was, it's a grind those first those first two years. And the first thing Jeff uh, Fisher ever said when he came into a meeting, he said, "Hey, listen, I'll tell you right now, it's hard to make an NFL team. It's harder to stay on an NFL team." And that uh, that resonated with me. And you know, every year I approach my NFL career as though I'm a rookie coming in trying to get a job so and Jeff Fisher I've, I've met him a few times his son Brandon played here how he's a he's a players coach right I mean he's he, a phenomenal guy I mean he's he is not only a coach he's a he's a just a true human being that cares about you and that's the best thing that I knew about Jeff Fisher is he really cared and um, you know great guy to play for knowledge forever I mean he uh, you know he's been around gosh I don't know I think 20 some years um, and it was it was really just a blessing to have Jeff there What's what's the process like at this point in your your career uh, free agent status? Are you, I ideally, do you anticipate or hope for some kind of, of contact and, and maybe negotiate in a, in a range? And I guess you got less than a month now, right, till teams begin training camp. Ideally, would you like to be somewhere before all that starts? Would that make it a little easier? <laughs> that depends we were, we were on who's listening. We were talking about this earlier. Oh, depends on yeah. who's listening. What? If you ain't got to do training camp, oh, okay. go and play first game. That's not a bad deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> ideally, I would. You know, that's that's a time of bonding, and you figure out who you're playing with, who your teammates are. Um, you know, this was the first year where, where I wasn't part of the team in OTAs, and it was a little tough in the first couple of weeks because I'm a, you know, I like to, I'm a team guy. You know, I, I want to know who I'm playing with, and I want them guys to know who I am, and um, what I stand for, and it's 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 tough when you miss all that, and then I'm going to have to jump in in training camp when all these guys have already bonded and everything, and uh, find a spot and be that guy. So, um, ideally, yeah, I find somewhere before training camp hits and and go in there and um, earn my spot, uh, you know. But uh, it's possible that that halfway through camp I get a call and, and got to play the last two games. So I'm I'll be ready for either way. I'm working for that opportunity. So. And so Gerns was was what saying, hey, wouldn't it be great if you signed like the day before the season started? <laughs> That's that's so typical yeah, of yeah. you. Well, yeah. do all the what a lounger you, you have are. to work. Here's get Chase Reynolds working his butt off, and you're <laughs> ah now relax, man. Yeah, just take your time. Yeah. Well, Chase, we'll let you get back at it. We're gonna grab Coach Mick Delaney here and uh, a guy that you know, and uh, we wish you luck. I know you're gonna be working your butt off, and, and we'll be watching you somewhere this fall. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? I hear yeah. I hear Seattle needs. Uh, need some guys so uh yeah you know, well, stay in the northwest <laughs> i'm gonna try that's that's ideal for me so <laughs> thanks for having me on guys i appreciate it thank you uh, good Ch job chase reynolds former Droman Droman Drummond trojan montana yeah. grizzly one of the best and oh wait uh, that's what we should ask him did it break your heart that the Drummond had to merge with with phillipsburg that's a I, tough question yeah well oh, these, this what, is a tough show it is i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest <laughs> it's the the clark what? fork what the clark fork titans uh, now or something like that see or? you put me on the spot uh, something Flint like that Crick valley Titans, there you I go. Think okay. What called. You right. know what, what I what I tell everybody if, if if that's what it takes for uh, for them guys to be able to play football, then then good for them. Uh, the only part I wish is they were still the Drum and Trojans. We put a lot of heart. Yeah. Sweat, yeah. Beat the bird. Beat and, the uh, bird. Beat the yeah. bird. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm happy for them. Awesome. Yeah. Thank well, you guys. Hey, th thanks, Chase. You get back out there and mingle. See ya. Chase Reynolds, NFL, former Coach? Montana Grizzly. How are we doing, Danny? We're doing great. Good to see you. Wow. Come we they got Mick Delaney off of the golf course. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, the golf course is right over there, though. You know he's going to try to get a few more in before it gets dark out. Well, this, this, is, this is true. This is true. Can you hear us okay, Coach? That's all right. A little windy. Yeah. Hey, hey, Coach. How's it going? Guernsey, I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> you look like a million way better, bucks. Way better than I should be for an old, old guy. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I, I see you more in Butte than I do in Missoula. Um, go over there visiting Cameron, but uh, what you been up to? Just uh, just living a good life? I am. I'm playing a lot of golf. Not very well sometimes, but uh, you know, we got a bunch of old cronies, about 20 of us that play at least five days a week, sometimes oh boy. six, and go play, you know, for big money, like dimes and quarters and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Maybe a dollar once uh, in a while. You know, 
So life is good. Traveling a little bit, doing some work with Fellowship for Christian Athletes and with the high school coaches and frontier coaches. So, you know, just a lot of good things. Awesome. Are you now? I know you you kind of dabbled in the uh, the television stuff uh, the past couple of years. You're going to do a little bit more of that this coming yeah, year. Yeah, we are. I think we have. I think Fox uh, SWX has five games, I believe. Uh, two, three at home, and two on the road. Five or six. So, we'll do those with, uh, you know, with. Uh, uh, with Sean and, and Gene, and it'll be, you know, I, I look forward to that. I enjoy that, like you do, did the radio stuff. It keeps you in touch a little bit, and, you know, with my grandson, a fifth-year senior, it even gets me a little more involved so that I have a really good reason to pay attention. <laughs> exactly. Has it, has it been tough to, to hang up the, the, the coaching whistle, or is it, uh, was it time? Uh, it was time. <laughs> it was time. Uh, you know, you, you miss the kids and the relationship with the coaches, but, you know, I, I still see the players and I see the coaches. And so those, you know, those relationships and contacts stay in touch. And uh, it was time, uh, Guernsey, you know, shoot 50 years and the energy wow. it takes anymore to, you know, to do what you think you need to do or what you do have to do. And, uh, you know, I loved every minute of it. And I was, you know, very fortunate to stay healthy and keep that energy level up. But, you know, it got harder and harder. It got to where, you know, you get up at 4.30 and you go to work and get home at 6 and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, there's more to life than that. It, it's so great to see you. You're still involved with everything. I mean, every function, I, I swear you're at, the spring games, the, uh, you, know, you know, you name it. I, I'm, I'm su and I'm surprised, really, that you're still not coaching. I'm surprised that Sherry didn't say, you know, <laughs> five more years, stay out of my hair. Well, I'm you out know. of her hair, you know. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, you know, I get up in the morning and leave, and that's not a problem, staying out of her hair. And, you know, we still do fine. She was alone all those years, and, you know, she said, you're not going to screw me up now by coming home and thinking you're going to run this place. So <laughs> I don't. I just say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I tell you what, one of the, besides from just doing the games and being amongst the team and players at the radio, the, one of the things I miss the most is, is Coach Delaney's wife and I, when we were on the road, I don't know, two or three times a year, we would find an olive garden or or something and go eat dinner. And that was one of the highlights of my weekend, I swear. So, uh, Sherry, if you're listening, well, you're probably yeah. not because coach is on. But uh, you know you, what? She kept me really humble through the, those years. Like, <laughs> well, she you know, she ignored you, but the rest of us a heck of, us. of a lot more than they. Yeah. You know, they they always want to know where she's at, what she's doing. They could care less about an old has been like me. But where's Sherry? What she up to? What she doing? <laughs> well, that's yeah. because she means. Have you ever? You know, she's one of those people. I I, I don't know many people that, that make you feel more welcome around them than, than, than she does, you know? Yeah, she's a true beauter through and through, you know, for <laughs> positive, sure. And, you know, loves people, loves kids, you know, really, really enjoyed the players and yeah. yeah, and the coaches and their wives, even though they were, for in the most part, way, way younger than we were. She was she was a great head coach's wife and a great assistant coach's wife. Make, when you said, you made the comment that, that it was time, did, did you, was part of it, you just kind of felt like, you know, I'm I'm starting to, to to delegate a little more of this and that to to these guys, and and that's just not me. Was that did that kind of go no, through your head a little Danny, bit? No, that really wasn't it. You know, I, I was always a I think a pretty darn good delegator. Well, that's I, why I brought that up because yeah, I, I would say more coach, than any other coach you know, I know. I wanted them to coach. I let them coach, and and you know, uh, I obviously help them along to you know do things better that I didn't think they did as well as they should, and leave them alone when they were doing things really well. And it, it all turned out, you know, to be. Uh, I think just when I say time, it was it was just time. I I felt it was you know somebody else's opportunity to come in and and, and have the chance to be, you know, to be a head coach at the University of Montana and. Uh, it's just, you know, it, I was very blessed to, to have that chance at the end of my career. Well, and I, I think that's the, I think the, the better coaches out there are the ones that do delegate. I know that, uh, that Coach Reed did a lot of delegating. He was one of, he, he always said, you know, I coached the tight ends. And, and I was like the tight end. We really didn't have one. Yeah. But, but he would just constantly walk around and just, you know, just, just kind of, throw out little little uh, pieces of advice or technique mm -hmm. things or whatever but the interesting thing I found out from Billy Cockill is you know I always coach Reed kind of came across as grandfatherly reminded me of my grandpa kind of kind of aloof at times boy it, I tell you what Billy Cockill said when uh, those doors were closed and they were running those meetings though you know 
who exactly was in charge. Yeah, I think I was probably kind of that way a little bit too. You know, uh, uh, just such a, you know, just such a great, great group of guys that, that I had, especially the last two years. You know, a lot of young guys, and now Fancy and and uh, uh, Cuff Fancy and and Leggy Suenor at the University of Hawaii. Uh, Tory Myers was with the Baltimore Ravens. He just took a really nice high school job in a brand new school out in the Seattle area. Cade Rainings just got hired by the Packers as a special teams control guy, quality control. Wow. So, you know, every Scott Gregg just got an AD's job at McNary High School in Oregon. And, you know, the guys are all doing really well. Jake is at Kukas is at Oregon State. And so I was just really, you know, really fortunate to have good young coaches that you know, worked hard to get themselves better. Eric Williams is at Idaho with Petrino, so yeah, they're all doing well. I mean, coaches are no coaches are no different than players. When they're young, they're they're green, and and as they get older, they become better coaches. And and I mean, is that is that is that right? Oh, for sure. And you know where the position I was in, knowing that it was going to be fairly short term, you know, two, three years, four years maybe, max. Uh, I, I wanted young guys that you know I felt I could help do it my way first of all or, or our way it was never my way our way and then you know go on to do some really good things and every one of them are doing that so you know I, i'm blessed i actually have i'll tell you this in secret i'll whisper to you four of the guys at montana state are fixed players of mine <laughs> and one's a defensive coordinator yeah uh, but you know you love to see those kids do well and they are they're good young coaches well before we let you go coach um you know you came in to become the head coach. I mean, it was kind of a surprise. You know, you thought you were done coming in and, and, and writing the ship in a, in a time when it needed it. And I, I always said I thought you were the right guy at the right time Me too. And, and brought us back uh, from the brink. And, uh, and I thought you did an excellent job and, uh, and, and so glad that we became friends over the years and, uh, and uh, just, just love you and uh, Grizz forever. Well, thank you so much, Scott and, and Denny and, of course, Mick. You know, we, we had fun. Uh, that was part of the deal. My, I love my radio show on uh, whatever day. What day? Tuesdays did we We did it? Tuesdays. Yeah, yes, Tuesdays, sir. yeah. I love that. I like being around you guys and, you know, traveling and doing our thing there. It was just a, a really, really positive, pleasant experience for me. Well, I tell you what, back at you, Coach. Back it's been a pleasure. at you. Well, thank you very much. We'll, we'll see thanks, you on Thanks on for giving Friday. up golf one night. Okay. You know? <laughs> yep. Uh, you're, you're being called. You're, yeah, you're, no, he's got to go. Going, we got to right? go. You're being beckoned. Thank you, Mick. He's got a, thanks, he's got a guys. beaut hat on. Appreciate it. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Lard butt 1K. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you what, what a, that went quicker than quick, didn't it, Denny? I, uh, I, I, I think I'll invite us back next year, whether they want us or not. You know, we've, we've got we to gotta make this an annual event, Gerns. This has just been a blast. Well, let's thank our sponsors again really quick. You Orange bet. Street Food Farm, Cynics Mountain West Co-op, First Montana Bank, Bell McCall Ford, The Peak Health and Wellness, Granite Pharmacy, Montana Tool, Thomas Plumbing, and Jerry Wessels Tire Center, Miss Jones, uh, Dave Guffey, Colt Anderson, Jordan Tripp, Chase Reynolds, and Mick Delaney. We'll see you next week. See Denny. you next Wednesday, Gerns. Happy job. Fourth of July. The savings continue during CHS Mountain West Cooperative's June Hot Buys. Keep your critters crowing with CHS Payback Feed. This month's hot buy is the Payback Egg Layer Pellets or Crumbles in 50-pound bags, just $11.99. Plus, we have the grit and oyster shell for added calcium and straw.